There are several analytical decisions which go into performing a meta-analysis, and these decisions affect your results and your conclusions. One of these decisions is which studies to include in your meta-analysis. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to calculate and visualize all possible study combinations for your meta-analysis. And the reason this is important, or one of the reasons this is important, is that you want to check that one study or one group of studies isn't biasing your results. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is uh, load uh, Metaphor, uh, which is the package we're going to be doing our analysis in. And then we are going to be getting a data set which is a sample data set which is built in to the metaphor package, which is a correlational data set looking at the relationship between medication adherence and conscientiousness or the personality trait of conscientiousness. So we've got this. Let's have a look at the data set. I'll have a quick look anyway. Okay, so we've got 16 studies and uh, importantly, we've got uh, the, the number of participants in each study and Pearson's R correlation. And from that, we can calculate the effect size and their variances. So we're gonna do that with the, the ESCalc function in metaphor, and we have to tell it which measure to use. Correlational measure. And we have to specify the effect size or the variable that has the effect size in it and the variable which has the number. And from that, you can calculate the effect sizes and its variances and also specify where the data actually is. Okay, um, and then we'll put that there. There we go. Let's look again in our data set and we can actually see at the end here, here we have um, the effect sizes and the variances. So now we can actually perform our meta-analysis. Putting it in an object called res, and we are specifying um, that the effect size is in this variable. The variance is there in this variable, and the data set is there. There we go. So now we have our object. We have a meta-analysis. Let's have a quick look at the results. We can see that the estimate is almost 0.15 and this is statistically significant, but let's make a forest plot so we can actually visualize this using the forest function. Take a closer look. There we go. So that effect size, uh, there's a bit of a mix there, but the summary effect size is 0.15. Uh, now, one thing that you can do to actually look at the influence of studies is using the leave one out function. Um, and this basically runs a set of meta-analyses leaving one of, the meta one of the studies out of the meta-analysis. Um, okay, let's run that and it's called leave one out, put the object in there. So this is running that, let's have a look. So we have all these estimates there and all the estimates for these, um, for these meta-analyses are very similar to the original one. Around 0.14 to 0.15. Let's run our, um, our analysis, which looks at all possible study combinations, uh, which is called a gosh plot. Let's see how we go. Uh, okay, now, 65,535 possible models. This is gonna take a while, so let's wait. Okay, we are all done. That could have taken a while depending on your computer. Now, let's uh, plot that. Um, that. This is just uh, adding the breaks uh, command just makes things a little bit easier to see. Let's 
putting that all together. So here we can see all 65,000 uh, summary effect sizes that were calculated for all combinations of studies. These seem to range from about 0 0.05 up to about 0.25 and you can also see there is a range of heterogeneity when it comes to these study combinations but um, uh, the average is around 0.15. We can also see the distributions there. Uh, one thing you can do is also specify and uh, call out a specific study. So we can do that again by doing this and say if study 10, you were interested in seeing the effects there or the, um, the meta-analysis summary effect sizes that include that study, you can do the study 10 like that. Let's see what that looks like. And they'll have different colors. There we go. Uh, study 10 is in red and we can see that the majority of the models that include study 10 have very high uh, heterogeneity and they tend to have effect sizes which are on the lower side and we can compare the distributions between studies that include study 10 and studies that don't. So if you're interested, check the notes for the code for this and you can try this out for your own data.